After the introduction of the Neuron System flagship Ethernet filter, Network Acoustic started improving its more affordable sibling, the Eno, resulting in the Eno 2 system, on review here. The influence of internet pollution on the sound quality is becoming better known now. There is so much electronic noise in your house and that can have severe influence on your stereo sound quality. Over the air radio and TV transmitters, cell phone radio waves and light dimmers are well known interference sources when in the vicinity. Recently smart lightning and other domotica appliances were added. A friend of mine who owns a very high quality stereo consisting of a Grim Audio Mewtwo player, a pair of Halcro Eclipse mono amplifiers and a pair of PMC Finestrias had Philips Hue smart lighting installed throughout the house and the garden. It has such an influence on the sound quality that he had to remove it again. I heard of this too late so I couldn't try to solve it with Ethernet filters. I myself use inner smart plugs to only switch on and off normal lights and controlled by Homey Pro and that doesn't seem to have influence on the sound quality of my set of 1A and 1B. I heard no difference when the smart plugs are removed again. Still, as we see further on, filtering the Ethernet does influence the sound quality. In my situation, the Grim U2 appears to be less sensitive to Ethernet noise than most network players, so I used other network players to evaluate the product on test here. In general there are two approaches to fight Ethernet noise. Use an audio grade network switch or an audio grade Ethernet filter. Also the cable between the switch or the filter and the streamer has its influence. Although I was amongst the first to review audio grade switches and find the good ones perfect solutions, I prefer audio grade Ethernet filters for the simple reason that they are easier in use. They don't need a power supply which reduces the risk of the power supply pollutes the Ethernet signal and the power lines surrounding your stereo. For audio grade switches normally sound best when used with switch mode power supplies. Linear power supplies make the sound less detailed, rounded off. But the switch mode power supplies that come with these switches are usually poorly filtered. So I have used the Eno system for a few years in my set of 1B while in my set of 1A I used the Network Acoustics Muon system. The system means the combination of the Eno or Muon filter and the Eno or Muon Ethernet cables. But let's first see where the Eno 2 system fits in your stereo. On one side the Eno2 system is to be connected to your router modem so it connects to the internet and eventually to the computer or NAS. On the other side it is to be connected to your network connector on the network player. That in turn is connected to the analog inputs of amplifier. The amp in turn is connected to a pair of loudspeakers or headphones. The sound quality can further be improved if a switch is inserted between the modem router and the Eno2. If you use a separate network transport and a DAC it would look like this. Another alternative is an amplifier or AV receiver with built in streaming. The first generation Eno did 100 megabit which is generally fine for audio. Even the highest sampling rates can be played back over 100 megabit. Often 100 megabit switches cause less pollution in the square wave signal that is used to transport the bits. But 100 megabits becomes annoying if you use a music player that has internal storage and you need to fill the storage with music over the network. For that will go a lot slower. The Eno2 system does 1000 megabits, also known as 1 gigabit, where 100 megabit Ethernet cable has 4 cores, 1 gigabit cable has 8. This means that double the amount of filter cores is needed. 
instead of the plastic housing the first generation had. The Eno2 housing is machined from billet aluminium. It's smaller too, measuring 109 by 90 by 30 mm and weighs half a kilo. It comes with two Eno2 network cables, one 75 cm long, the second 1.5 m long. Other lengths are available as an option. The cables have to be used in one direction, as indicated on the outgoing Telegatner plugs. Why that is I don't know, Ethernet by definition is bidirectional. On the front the network acoustics name is engraved, on the top Eno2 is engraved, on one of the short sides we find two RJ45 connectors, one labelled out, the other labelled in. I decided to test the Eno2 system on two digital front ends. The Magnamano Ultra MK3.5 Farad music streamer running Gen2 player with the Holo Audio Cyan 2 DAC as representative of the grassroots high quality front end and the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge 2 as representative of an all in one front end. It is an analog preamp, rune server, rune endpoint and a DAC in one. The Mano Cyan 2 combination is in my setup 1B for some time now. The Brooklyn DAC has been my reference for a long time, but is end of life for some time now. The Brooklyn Bridge 2 now has been added in the same setup as alternative. See the links in the top right corner at the end of this video and in the description below this video on YouTube for reviews. Let's start with the first setup. The Eno2 was connected to the Magnum Mano over one of the two Eno Ethernet cables that came with the Eno2 system. Using a 50 cm short 4K UHD Trozo HDMI cable, the Mano was connected to the Holo Audio Cyan2. The analog outputs of the Cyan2 were connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier on OVA EQ feed over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The PMC FAT12 signature loudspeakers on stack Audio OVA 70 isolators were connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The Zixel GS1900-10HP switch was connected to the Eno2 over alternatively CAT6 patch cable, the first gen Eno system and the Eno2 system. Access to the internet was over the Zico business modem that is connected to the Zixel switch over CAT6 patch cable. Also connected to the Zixel is the Sonic Transporter i7 CDR that runs Rune server. An iPad 2 was used to control Rune. All equipment was placed in a Creative Trend 3-3 rack. I started off with the CAT6 patch cable of no particular origin, as used by many to connect the computer with. That gave a fair focus, a slightly ragged edge around voices, mediocre black ground, somewhat stressed sound and a reasonable musical result. When I plugged in the Eno first generation, voices cleaned up nicely. There was clearly more focus, a convincing black background, the stress was almost gone and the music was more convincing, more involving. Then I plugged in the Eno 2 and again on all these points the sound quality was a small step up again. There was something non-definable but very convincing. It gave an extra dimension to the sound and thus to the music. Time for the Bitec Brooklyn Bridge 2 that was alternatively connected to the Zixel switch over a CAT6, the first gen Eno system and the Eno2 system. The analog outputs of the MyTech were connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier on OVA EQ feed over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio OVA70 isolators were connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. Access to the internet was over the Zixel business modem that was connected to the Zixel over a CAT6 patch cable. Also connected to the Zixel is the Sonic Transporter i7 CDR that runs Rune server. An iPad 2 was used to control Rune. All equipment was placed in the Creative Trend 3-3 rack. 
Again I started off with the CAT6 patch cable, directly connected with the Zixel switch. The sound of the Brooklyn Bridge 2 is somewhat more rounded, warmer and therefore poor sibilance performance was more noticeable. But for the rest the impressions were comparable with those of the Magna Holo audio combination. The first gen Eno again gave a clear improvement in sound quality and the Eno 2 brought the refinement. There is no doubt filtering the Ethernet signals give a rather noticeable improvement of the sound quality. I have reviewed several of them, including those by Pink Phone, Stack Audio, Artvark and Network Acoustics. It appears that there is a direct relationship between the price and performance. So the question is, what is the best filter for you? And that depends on the quality of your stereo, how critical a listener you are and how you value money. But from my setup 2A upwards, the improvement the Eno2 system offers is clearly audible. Compared to the first gen Eno, the 1 gigabit upgrade and the nice aluminium housing are valued upgrades that come at only a small increment in price. Where the plastic 100 megabit Eno system costed £995, the Eno2 is priced at £1162. From now on it will be in my setup 1B. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. There will be a new video next week, so subscribe to this channel or follow me on Patreon, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram to stay informed on when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumbs up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.